Welcome. This is Kathy Durden, and today we're going to do collage. So I use uh, concentrated watercolor. I use acrylic uh, pearlescence acrylic inks. I'm going to be working on, and you want to use spectra art tissue that bleeds. It's a different from the tissue paper that you buy to wrap packages. But you can get this on Amazon. Uh, we're going to be working off uh, on a piece of illustration board, which you'll draw your image on afterwards. This is the finished product of what we're going to create. We will first dye our papers and we'll create things that look like this. I use watercolor and um, the inks. And this is an exercise in understanding what happens when you blend colors together and, you, and planning. You want to create a palette for what you're going to uh, paint because you want to have every color and every color combination uh, for what you're going to create. The last thing you want to do is get halfway through and go, oh, I don't have it. Fill in the blank what color you need. So you want to create all of that. You want to create also variations in how things bleed together and use that to create interest in your painting and also your shadow areas. Um, I tend to use just the art tissue with the liquid watercolor. You can also, though, and you're going to be using this with your foam brush, you can also do this with um, polymer medium and put polymer medium on your art tissue first and then you can put in either the liquid acrylic or or rather the watercolor concentrate or you can actually use a liquid acrylic for just remember that when if you're using liquid acrylic you are creating a plasticized piece of paper and you have to treat it accordingly but you get some very interesting this piece of paper actually has um, polymer medium on it and you get this interesting bubbling effect. It's very cool. Um, so uh, you can also use these papers not just to create a single collage, but you can also use them and incorporate them into your um, uh, watercolors as well. So enjoy and have fun. So I'm also trying to create some pinks and some purples. I'm working off on a uh, white trash bag so I can see what I'm doing. And I always use a drawing board underneath. I use it as a pizza paddle to move the papers around. Uh, it will get very crazy in a minute. I'm also using a spray bottle that's a hairspray, a hairdresser spray bottle. It makes a very fine mist. And you can see I'm using about 10 to 15 squirts in this uh, in the um, water in the concentrated watercolor. All right, let's. I think that's my detail guy. Yeah, it's my detail guy. I'll be right back. Mommy dumped her tea over. Yeah, mommy ran around the corner too fast and dumped her tea over. Okay, mommy's going to have to work. And I'm adding a, you want to make sure you have water available because you're going to be using a foamy brush too. Now you're going to spray the paper to moisten it. And again, you want this to be a very fine mist spray. So you don't want it to get too wet because it'll take forever to dry. 
And the crinkle of the paper and the crinkle of the trash bag also creates some texture. So you want to create that texture um, to give yourself different textures, different gradations. You're constantly thinking through, what do I need for my painting? Um, do I need darks? Do I need lights? Do I need uh, different colors blending together? Unexpected colors blending together too. And you can see how bright that watercolor is. And I then go back and spray again to get the residual and to get a little bit more dilute color. Now I'm trying to do colors that are going to blend well together in this one because I want to create some bright colors. But if I want to create some browns or some tertiary colors, I'll, I'll put colors together that blend into tertiary colors. And you notice that it's, some of these are really bright. Some of these are going to, and they're, they're so much fun just to watch them all blend together. And again, I sprayed that uh, concentrated watercolor again, just to make sure that I, first of all, use it all. And secondly, that I get different values in my uh, palette because this is your only palette. And I was using two different kinds of blue. I was using a cobalt blue and also an ultramarine blue for this. And they're blending together to create some purples, some dark colors, some light colors. And you can start to see how fun this is. Now, this is where that foamy brush comes in to help the blending process and also to move the colors around. You have to be very careful with how you're using the brush. Um, don't try and be really hard on it. This paper is very fragile and will tear. Now you can also do a layer of polymer medium, um, either matte or polymer uh, when you're doing this and it will create a different texture. Uh, but just remember, it, and the, water, the watercolor will sit up a little differently as opposed to permeating the paper. Just remember that if you're doing that, first of all, you're putting a layer of polymer in with the um, foamy brush, you have to be very gentle or your paper is gonna tear. And alternatively, um, you are also creating a plasticized piece of paper. So you have to treat it accordingly when you're storing it. I always store those with wax paper between them because otherwise they stick together. And you can see how things start to create some really fun textures. I'm making sure I'm using all my, all my inks. Now I'm also applying a pearlescence, the FW pearlescence acrylic inks, um, just again to create some some sparkle into my paper, add a little bit more interest in my paper. You never know what you need in your, um, what you're gonna want. So you wanna have, give yourself options. Obviously uh, you've planned out what you need, but you wanna give yourself a lot of uh, different variations, different textures. And I'm then spraying the pearlescence to kind of create a shimmer over the, uh, the paper that I'm creating. And you can see you've got some darker colors, some lighter colors, some more concentrated colors. And it's very important to make sure you have all your values in your, in your pile of papers because uh, you don't want to have just a bunch of midtones. You want to have uh, darks and lights. Um, it's also important to think through, again, what goes with other colors, how things are going to blend, what they're going to mix like you can see how you get you're getting a dark purple when you've got that um ultramarine and also the uh alizarin together it's getting a really dark deep purple um the stoppers on these things go really fast so you can either get new stoppers or you can just pour it out mine have i've had mine for for quite some time so they the rubber is gone by this point.
and that is our uh, how to create a paper. And then you just let it sit somewhere and to dry. The fact that I've got it on a drawing board, you can use that. You can still move things around if you decide you've got to, you want to move things around and help it blend a little bit more. Or you could just let it sit um, and uh, just, it now needs to dry. It takes a little while and you don't want to dump it because this is very liquid at this point. So again, you're using that drawing board as a pizza paddle to move it around. Now, at this point, you have decided what you're going to do on your, as your image. And you've, you're reliant on creating a very good design and composition because you're not going to be able to create a lot of detail in this painting because you're going to be tearing papers but you want to think about all of your design elements your um dark, both your structure and also how to create centers of interest by um, value differences between your pieces of paper and that's where you're going to bring your eye in. You're not going to be able to lose edges because there's it's hard to lose edges in uh, torn paper. So value differences are going to be one of the key areas for how you're going to create uh, your your center of interest. So I have transferred my drawing onto my piece of illustration board. I use the grid system to do that. And I happen to be using the same image that I used last year to uh, do the demo I did last year. It's a very good triangular composition. Um, and so that's what I'm going to use again. Uh, hopefully my center of interest is not too much bullseyed in the middle of my composition. And um, I I'm using this illustration board. You need a very strong substrate to, get, to hold all of this uh, paper that you're using. And then I get my, my bin of papers. Now, I have a very extensive collection of papers, but I always end up with um, needing different papers. You also want to use shop towels. I happen to love blue shop towels, both for painting watercolor and uh, everything else. And you can see I have a very extensive collection, but I also keep all my scraps. And I keep all my scraps in this little plastic baggie with scraps um, because you need little pieces of paper, you need big pieces of paper and uh, you don't want to throw anything away. Um, I've also, we used to use these things um, to make cards too. So that's why there's all those uh, cutouts of, of leaves in my scrap pile. So, but you can see I've got lots of little scraps and big scraps, and some of them are very blended. So, because I've got to get that those tertiary colors in, and that's how you get the tertiary colors in by blending different colors together. So, it's uh, in creating that palette. So, what I'm going to do is start to design my my pa my um, painting of collage. And I need to take, go through all my pieces of paper and tear them up and put them down. Now, I'm not going to stick them down initially. I'm just going to tear them up because once, you're, once you stick them down, you're, unlike watercolor, you can't uh, wipe it away. Uh, and you can see I've got different values going. I've got different textures going in there. And I've got that, that fun texture creating the hydrangea in the middle. And I'm just thinking through what I'm putting next to each other, where my colors are bouncing in, where they're, and balancing also my colors against each other, moving things around, 
uh, looking for textures, trying to make sure that I'm not just all mid-tones, uh, creating my shadow shapes with darks. So it's good to have some darks and some tertiary colors, not bright colors, to create those shadow shapes. And notice that I've decided to change out that um, teapot from white to pink just because uh, it's hard to do white on this. You would just do... Um, uncolored watercolor or tissue paper. Uh, I've also created some very light colors. See, that's a very light color for my, for my table. So you want to make sure you've got some of those very light colors floating through. That's even lighter. I thought that color was too dark, so I went lighter still and to balance it. And I'm using darker colors to draw my center of my eye to pop the lighter colors. And it's just experiment. Nope, don't like that. So constantly thinking through and using some darks to pop my lights. And again, just make it see lights against darks to have value differences and maybe I don't want value differences so some of these places I've got oh I decided I needed that pop there and a very dark color up there to draw my eye up there so it's an iterative change change your mind and again, you can't make these decisions to change things once you've started putting things down. So you want to do your, uh, just make your decisions before you start putting things down. So it's yes, no, yes, no, move it around. And make sure you don't have a fan going because, again, there's nothing stuck down at this point. Now I'm going to get out my polymer medium. You can either use polymer or matte medium. I just happen to have polymer handy. Um, if you use matte, it's going to be dull. If you use polymer, it's going to be a little bit shinier. And again, you're using that foamy. So you start, figure out a place to start and start putting things down. Now be very careful with what you're putting down and what you do. And here I had, um, color in my foamy so you definitely want to make have clear water and a fresh foamy because otherwise now you're going to brayer things down with it using that shop towel and your brayer to get it flat and make sure you keep all get all your pieces your corners down they tend to stick up so you have to be very careful and in fact you will go back at the very end and stick all those little corners down that are popping up and making decisions, hopefully remembering what was where. And brayering it down to make sure it sticks down. Little pieces, big pieces, it's like a little jigsaw puzzle. And you're still potentially making some decision changes here, but hopefully you've made most of your decision points before you started at this point. Because again, once you've put things down, you can't take them up. You can't stick it under the, you can't get the scrubby out. You can't do anything. It's just down. And the other thing is you really can't, you can't wash, put a wash over something and make it less prominent. You could put a little bit of tissue paper over something, but it really doesn't, because the tissue paper is very translucent, you really, once you've got a dark down, it's, you're not going to, you're not going to cover it up. You can cover it up a little bit, but not a lot. 
notice also that all of your all of your shadows your form shadows your cast shadows are all created by the colors that you're using the different little pieces of tissue paper so they're doing the top of the ball jar with some um some shiny silver color tissue paper so i've got something that will create that that silver and it's again sort of like a tissue a, a little bit of a uh, jigsaw puzzle you've got to create your little areas with tiny pieces of tissue paper and here you're creating your your form shadow with darker colors of tissue paper something that's similarly maybe in the same color range but a darker value and it's still moving around Putting the cup down now, the little saucer for the cup. Here I'm, I've added the form shadow for that lemon. And then I've created the shadow shapes for the, the, the shadows being cast by the, by the items. And here I've got my, my, this is why it's very important to have lights because you do have to have areas where you don't want really dark, um, dark pieces you want lights and dark so you have to have created some very pale colored papers and some some darker papers and sometimes you're going to use big pieces but even those big pieces have different values in them they have different textures in them so they create interest And you're still making decisions, hopefully not bad ones, on what goes where. Because again, once you've put it down, it's down. You can go darker, but you can't go lighter. I don't pour out a lot of polymer medium. Um, a little bit goes a long way. You don't really want a goopy brush. You want it because it will get, your brush will get goopy as it is. And you're not using a lot to, to glue things down. And notice I'm still making some decisions as to what goes where. Um, but at this point, I'm trying to keep uh, my lights out, trying to keep it fairly light in the backgrounds to avoid making it too busy, but also structuring the table with my background. And basically using the tissue paper as a drawing element. Now here I'm using a dark to pop those, uh, the lights so I can see um, the value changes. Darks against lights draw the eye there and out, almost outline things. And here I'm pulling in some, some more darks to uh, outline my lights or pop my lights. And again, using those darks to, to draw the eye around 
and pop some of my lights. Now, I realized here that I've got some, I need to put some real darks in, and that's where I'm pulling in the leaves there and that dark up there. And I still need, much as I love that silver, it's distracting, so I gotta cover it up with something else. Now at this point, I've got to pull in some more background to cover up all those areas. And you will, at the end, go through and find tiny little spots and just try to put tiny little pieces because you want to cover every piece of the illustration board. And so that's what I'm doing now is covering every little piece there and popping in again some darks. Now what I've decided here is that that cup was just lost and I had to go dark and I needed a dark over in that corner. And now I'm putting in some form shadows first on the ball jar and I will eventually put in a form shadow on the vase as well. And I've got to put my form shadows in on my fruit too. And this is where it gets very tiny little pieces to um, get some darker colors to be my form shadow on and cast shadows on my pieces of fruit. Little tiny pieces there. And I'm cutting in those little tiny pieces to create those shadow shapes, to create some depth in, in my fruit. And tiny little pieces. And constantly evaluating at this point. And I that that part in the middle is just bothering me. It looks like a big bullseye. So I want to define my table better over there on the on the left. So that's what I'm doing now. And getting some more definition to that table. And the same on the right. Just add some definition so it doesn't feel as floaty and get the shadow shape coming off the vase as well. And I've decided that that hydrangea needs some shaping. So that's what I'm doing now is adding some shaping to the hydrangea and putting some darks around it and making it a little less big. I also decided that I didn't have any pink up there and I needed to bounce the pink up there so that my eye balances for the pinks in the teapot and also in the, the fruit. So it's just a little bit of constant evaluation. What do I need to do to, to prove this? I need a little bit more dark there to pop my teapot and to get some depth going back into the ball jar. And I need some more definition on my table for the background. And just kind of thinking things through, trying different things. adding interest. Now I've got to add the shadow shape on my vase. There. Constantly evaluating what else do I need to do. I'm going to try and push that back, but notice I really can't push that back that much. And it's kind of like a little tiny wash, but it really doesn't push it back that much. And see how I'm leaving all those little tiny pieces? I'm keeping them to my right because I'm not going to throw them away. They're eventually going to go back in my baggie. And sometimes I can find little pieces that I want to use from that stash. Because those are pieces that are already 
being used elsewhere in my in my painting. There are colors that I'm using elsewhere in my painting. And I'm thinking, oh, I need a pop, dark pop right there. So I'll put a little bit more dark right there. That's where it needs to be. And a little bit dark over there to break up that big piece. And still looking at it, what else do I need? See my triangular shape, my triangular composition. Uh, the fact that that is a big piece of hydrangea in the middle being a bullseye was still bothering me. So there, that push makes it smaller, makes it more interesting over there, and still see that big triangle shape. And thinking through, what do I need? What do I, you know? Maybe get a dark up there to really pop some of the darks. Pop that flower out there. And I'm making sure all the little pieces are kind of um, put down. Again, looking at it, evaluating it, seeing my triangular shape, looking at my composition, looking at my colors. Are my colors bouncing around correctly? Do I have things balanced? I'm pretty close at this point. I'll let it sit for a while and probably add a couple things. And also, as I said, I want to let it sit and see if those little edges kind of pop up because I'll have to um, paste them down again. What I'm going to be using it at once I'm finished, 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 I will varnish this. And I'm going to varnish it either with a spray varnish or with a uh, varnish that I put in a Prevail sprayer and start with uh, a th three parts water to one part varnish and then spray it, do different levels of varnish to water, ending with three parts varnish to one part water. interested in learning more about what I do, you can go to my website, Kathy Durden, um, K-A-T-H-Y-D-U-R-D-I-N.com. I also list on there, I teach every, I, I teach during the week. Uh, I, most of my, or at least one of my classes per week is also available on Zoom, so you don't have to be located in the Tampa Bay area to, to join us, and we do a lot of different things. Um, and uh, we've even done uh, collage in my classes. So hopefully if you, this intrigued you, you want to try something new and different. And if you're interested, let me know.